Well, hello everyone, hello again. Uh, if you've not been able to uh, follow the last couple of lessons, uh, let me give you the context of what we've been talking about. We've been talking about what many uh, scripture scholars have called Moses' farewell speech to the people of Israel before they were about to enter into the promised land. As I pointed out, Moses never had the blessing of entering the promised land. He died up on Mount Nebo, which looks down over, it's a beautiful mountain that looks down over the promised land. It's a beautiful sight to behold. Joshua, who was succeeded him, led the people of Israel into the promised land. But Moses, in his farewell speech, used what have been referred to as the five verbs of life. And we talked already about the first one, loving the Lord. The second one, walking in his ways, which is what we want to talk about today. So when Moses said to the people, love the Lord, and then he said, walk in his ways. What did he mean by that? Well, you see, it's important to keep in mind that at the time of Israel, there were many teachers of the law who said that if you saw someone that was blind or crippled or in some way suffering, they were being punished by God, either because of something they did or something that their ancestors they did, and they're paying the price now. And you and I know that that's not what the heart of the Lord is all about. God loves his people. And the scripture says, God is close to the brokenhearted, which is another way of saying that when we're most in need is when the Lord is closest to us. When we are most carrying heavy crosses, that's when the Lord is near. And sometimes I still hear today from time to time, people say things like, <clears throat> I don't know why this tragedy has come to me or why I'm having to deal with this problem. I don't know what I did to God to deserve this. That's not the way that the Lord taught us. And when the Lord says through Moses to learn to walk in his ways, he's talking about learning to imitate the way of Jesus. When there was a man crippled and unable to walk, what did Jesus do? He walked up to him and said, what do you want? The man says, I want to walk again. Jesus gave him back the ability to walk. Or the blind man who said, I want to see. And what did the Lord do? Gave him back his sight and gave everyone that was in need that helping hand. And what did he say to the 10 lepers? Remember, the lepers were cast aside. They were separated from family, separated from the community. They were made to go off, live into caves, or out in the desert, away from everyone else. And originally they were separated because <clears throat> the disease we call today Hansen's disease, rather than calling it leprosy. But those who suffered from that disease were contagious. And in order to protect the community, they were made to live separately, and if they were cured or when they were healed, before they could come back to the community, they first had to go to the temple and show themselves to the priests. And if the priests dictated that they were now clean and no longer a threat to the rest of the community, they were welcomed back into the community. But Jesus met along the road 10 lepers who were just terribly, terribly suffering. And what did he do? You remember, he healed all 10 of them and said, go show yourself to the priests. In other words, you go and you'll see that the priests will welcome you back because you will be healed. And they were, all 10 of them. But only one came back and he fell at the feet of Jesus to thank him. And you remember what Jesus said, were not all 10 made clean? Where are the other nine? He was talking about giving thanks. And one of the best ways 
of giving thanks to God for our many blessings is through the Eucharist. And secondly, remember what we talked about the last time, loving God with your whole heart and soul, mind and strength, and loving in your neighbors yourself. And walking in the ways of the Lord is really making an effort to help others. We live in a world today where there are so many needs. And if we could each day make an effort to extend a kind word or a kind deed, or some way make the world a better place by contributing to some cause, if each of us did that, can you imagine just if only one person did that, the world would be a better place. But if every person who calls themselves a Christian, a Catholic, after Sunday Mass, would then spend the next week making an effort to do what the Lord did, rather than walking away from those in need, but making a difference, by doing some kind deed, making the world a better place, gosh, what a great and beautiful world we could have. There's a beautiful old saying <clears throat> that I love to quote, and it goes like this. You may have even heard it because it's very well known. And it says, any good deed, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness I can show to any fellow creature, let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again which is a beautiful way of saying that the Lord is putting us in the path of that person of need. And perhaps he's saying in the depths of our heart, maybe you're the one that I can use to lift that person up. Maybe you're the one that can say a kind word. Maybe you're the one can do a small kind deed. Maybe you're the one could just help lift the burden of the person who has been suffering. And you know something? We have been blessed as individuals as an, and as a nation, as no other country has been blessed before us. We need to be a blessing for others. God has given us blessings, not just for ourselves. Yes, he wants us to use our gifts and talents. Yes, he wants us to be successful. But he also wants us to know that those gifts are not just intended for us. He's giving them to us so that we in turn can be a blessing for others. So the first two of the verbs of Moses that give life and bring life, loving the Lord, walking in his ways. The next time we're gonna go over to number three, keeping his commandments. And until then, let me once again offer you God's blessing asking the Lord to keep you and all those you love in his tender loving care. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.